Let's talk about some of the things that were first introduced here at AEA. Brad, first of all, you've got some, uh, some changes you're making for version 2.2 in your software. What led you to those changes? Well, we put a lot of effort into creating feedback channels for our customers so they could give us um, ongoing recommendations about what we can do to improve our products. And since our products are easily upgradable, uh, via a software upload into the product itself, we're able to make those changes and we do releases on a regular basis, as well as we know that there are things we can want to constantly upgrade in the panels as well. So um, we took some of the customer feedback, integrated that into some of the development that we were putting together for this latest release. As well, we um, knew that we wanted to do some things with the, the uh, panning functionality of the product. Um, quicker access to some of the terrain data, and we integrated all those things into this version 2.2. The most uh, exciting addition, I think, to the 2.2 software is going to be the ability to have uh, charts and geo-referenced airport diagrams, and we'll be making that available in this latest version of the software as well with no activation fee for our customers. Let's talk about that a little bit. What does that mean to the pilot in the cockpit? What that means is, is that they're going to get increased situational awareness on the ground. The geo-reference airport diagrams will be able to show where their aircraft is relative to the taxiways and the runways. Of course, we all know that that reduces the uh, chances of runway incursions. And also, they'll be able to access their charts, the approach charts and departure, uh, right there on their panel and their primary view so they won't have to go fishing around the, the cockpit looking for their paper copies. What are some of the other highlights that are coming out in 2.2? Those are really the most significant ones um, for the 2.2 upgrade itself. We are doing some expanded panning capabilities. Um, we're also in initiating a targeting cursor that uh, will actually allow people to access the information by just scrolling over it as opposed to accessing it via an info selection. So really what we've created is the ability for a pilot to access the same information via multiple ways. We really try to build a product that's going to work the way the pilot wants to work, not force them into what our paradigm is of what we think navigation to uh, content should be. What else is teed up for 2010? We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming out in 2010. Um, in July, we're going to have our class three product available. That's the C3 Pro PFD and that will be uh, certified to level B software for class three aircraft. That's going to come out again in July. Also, we're going to be releasing our EA100 autopilot adapter interface, and that will be a KI-256 replacement that will work with all the King uh, autopilot systems that require attitude inputs. At the end of the year, we're going to be launching our engine instrumentation and that'll actually take critical engine data and bring it right into the MFD and display it right there in the pilot's primary view. How long have some of these products been in development? Well, they've been, we've been working on them for some time, but we've uh, got a reputation for bringing products to market very quickly. Again, our upgradability path allows us to bring products to market once we can get the certification, and then continue to add features as we go so people don't have to wait for us to go through a long development cycle. And it works very well for us and for our customers. One of the things that I've been hearing a lot about is the upgrade to synthetic vision in the product. That's really going to be an exciting upgrade. Yeah, our synthetic vision is a beautiful piece of work. I have to say I'm very happy with it. Our high resolution display that we have in our, in our product combined with the Jeppesen 3 arc second terrain data makes for a very compelling and a very realistic synthetic vision representation. And we have it on display in our booth and we'll have it at the shows for the summer to show people. And that'll be available in Q1 of 2011. One of the other things that, that we notice that we know a lot of pilots are going to be interested in is a, a backup replacement for some of the remaining steam gauges that are on glass panels. And you've got really an interesting solution to that, I think. We do. It's based on the EFD-1000 hardware, which is tried and proven. It's a uh, horizontal display, and we've actually done a software load that allows you to display the ADI and the HSI vertically in that horizontal platform and it will is designed to replace the standard three steam gauge uh, backup instruments that you normally see. It also has seven backup functions as opposed to just the three or maybe some of the four or five that you see in some of the other um, EFIS backup displays that are available. It adds, in effect, GPS steering and also adds a backup GPS flight plan if those are hooked in. 
A lot of folks talk about the concern about having an entirely electronic cockpit. With that backup, how do you address those concerns? Well, you know, we've been addressing backup since the company started. We've really worked hard to bring safety into the general aviation cockpit environment. So our products are entirely independent. If you go with a EFD-1000 pair, for example, just as standard in the panel, you've got two completely redundant systems. Nobody else offers that level of redundancy in, in general aviation. You have to get into some pretty big iron to get that. So if you lose one of your displays, your other display is going to function with all the sensors and everything. So we've integrated that same functionality, that same level of backup into our backup display product. Plus it also has a 30 minute battery just like our, our display products do now and you can get an external battery as well for pure backup function. Finally Brad, how do you view Aspen Avionics as, as its niche in the avionics world? We made no secret, we are a retrofit avionics company and we're the really only pure retrofit avionics company that is, is really in the aviation market today. We have always been focused on the general aviation cockpit which requires us to have a level of compatibility that you usually don't see in avionics manufacturers. Our goal is to work with all the existing avionics that are currently installed in the cockpit really looking to reduce the cost, the overall flyaway cost for our customers and make it safe avionics affordable. And 2,600 installations? 2,600 installations really over that worldwide. So we've got planes flying all over the globe with our products installed. You know, we only certified and started shipping the product two years ago this month, so that's a pretty significant number, really, and we're really happy with the adoption rate of our products. Brad Hayden, Vice President for Marketing for Aspen Avionics, thanks once again for being our very first guest on AeroTV's live broadcast. You bet. Thanks for having me, Tom.